What's up guys, Houndish here, and today I wanted to jump in and take a look at a bunch of new legendary weapons coming in Destiny 2, and take a bit more of an in-depth look at how things like stats and damage work in the game, but importantly I wanted to look into how archetypes of weapon work as well in Destiny 2, and explain how things have changed a little bit since Destiny 1. Firstly, I have to say a big thanks to Predator Shroom on Reddit, who spent a bunch of time collecting weapon stats from what we've seen so far. They've done a pretty awesome job and it really helps us identify some of what's happening with the weapons in Destiny 2. I will leave the original Reddit post so you guys can go and check it out. So let's start to break everything down. We'll begin with weapon archetypes, since everything else will make a bit more sense once we understand this. Of course, in Destiny 1, archetypes were defined by the rate of fire and impact class of the weapon. So we had the lowest rate of fire and highest impact class of weapons and we'll use the pulse rifle example of Parthian shot which has a rate of fire of 59 with 30 impact. Then of course on the other end of the spectrum we have the high rate of fire and low impact class so weapons like the clever dragon which has 77 rate of fire with an impact of just 4 points. And then of course in Destiny 1, depending on the type of weapon, you would see one or two archetypes in between the lowest and highest rate of fire weapons. Now in Destiny 2, this is just from what we understand right now, we have had a very limited sample pool of weapons, but it looks like we keep the same basic archetype principles. The biggest factor of change though is that an archetype refers to a particular number range for a given stat. So for example, the highest impact class of weapons in Destiny 2 can have impact stats ranging from around 85 points up to 100 points as opposed to being fixed like they were in Destiny 1. So these numbers are variable now and this new weapon system is why Bungie can control weapons individually. On top of this though, the archetype categories also affect hidden stats, so things like move faster with this weapon, which is for lightweight weapons, and then recoil pattern is more vertical, which is for the precision class of weapons. So as well as defining things like rate of fire and impact, this does also include hidden stats. In Destiny 2, archetypes of weapon are essentially defined by this information right here and you'll see this on every weapon. The known weapon descriptors are as follows. So we have adaptive, high impact, lightweight, precision, payday, rapid fire and aggressive but we also have some foundry specific definitions including hake precision and viced rapid fire. So if we take two adaptive hand cannons, we have Better Devils and the Soros GJS-42. These both have an impact of 70 and an RPM of 38, and then they'll have different range and reload and all of those other stats. But Better Devils has an updated version of the explosive rounds perk, and the Soros has a magazine perk which doesn't affect damage. So for this example, the weapons have identical rate of fire and impact stats, but in the case that Better Devils turned out to be too strong or overpowered, Bungie could go in and reduce its impact by 5 points for example. It would however still be in the same archetype as the Soros hand cannon because it fits into the number range that classifies that archetype. So in a lot of ways weapons are more complicated statistically speaking. Now if we take the Nightshade Pulse Rifle and the Nurgle PR4 or Nurgle however you say that, they both have a rate of fire of 450 RPM and a handling of 89 points and this is the lightweight class of weapons and that's probably why they also have such high handling stats. Importantly though, Nightshade has 56 impact and Nurgle, or Nurgle, has 55 impact. So again, it demonstrates the slight differences weapons can have inside of an archetype. And for now, we'll have to presume that that isn't a ballistics option or something like that. And again, this is how Bungie are separately controlling weapons. Admittedly though, as I said before, we do have a very limited set of weapons to compare from, so we can only actually make a direct comparison from two or three sets of weapons that we know of so far. But I think what Bungie is doing here is becoming pretty clear. So now let's go over some weapons we've seen gameplay of, what perks they have and how much damage they do, and this is courtesy of Predator Shroom's spreadsheet. Some of the weapons I have footage of and others I don't, so just bear that in mind. So we already spoke about Better Devils, it's an adaptive hand cannon and it has 70 impact with an RPM of 138. Interestingly, this weapon essentially has the new version of explosive rounds on it, and for body damage in PvE against a legionary, all of these numbers are against the 
same enemy type, we have 87 points times two, and then 87 plus 148 points for headshot damage. So this essentially confirms that right now, explosive rounds will do, you know, a good chunk more damage. But then if we compare that to PVP damage, we've got 24 times two for body shots and 24 plus 40 for PVP headshots. So you can also see the damage difference there between PVE and PVP. When you combine this with what gameplay we've seen, on the most part, primary weapons do roughly the kind of damage you would have expected in Destiny 1. There are some slight differences, but then in PVP, things are a little bit different because that time to kill has been increased. Up next though, we have the Does Not Compute Scout Rifle. This is in the high impact class of weapons, so it's a 90 impact and 150 rate of fire weapon. The high impact archetype description being long range, slow firing and high damage. And in PvE stuff, you'll get 51 body damage and 143 for headshot damage. And in PvP, that's 37 body damage and 52 critical damage. The Nightshade Pulse Rifle is in the lightweight category, so you're gonna see 50 56 impact and then 450 RPM. And it has a higher handling stat at 89 points and it also allows you to move faster while the weapon is equipped. So of course this is influenced by the lightweight archetype. We have the Scathelock Auto Rifle, and this is in the Adaptive category. You're going to see 60 rate of fire with an RPM of 600. It does have a handling stat of 83, so even though it's not a lightweight weapon, those handling stats can be bumped up on individual weapons. It'll do 20 PvE body damage with 50 critical damage, and then 14 PvP damage with 17 critical damage. We have the Needle Sidearm, and this is in the Precision category. It has a very high impact stat of 95 with an RPM of 257. We don't have any PvP numbers, but in PvE, you get up to 127 critical damage when you're in optimum range. So these things are gonna be, you know, fairly powerful in PvE stuff. Compare that to the Does Not Compute Scout Rifle and you were seeing 143 critical damage. So sidearms are gonna be pretty good. Up next, we have the Showrunner Submachine Gun. This is in the lightweight category. Obviously being a submachine gun, you're seeing a pretty high rate of fire of 900 RPM right there and it has 50 impact. Up next we have the Black Scorpion Scout Rifle. This is a Viced Scout Rifle, so it has Viced Rapid Fire, which allows full auto and a faster reload on an empty magazine. It has a rate of fire of 257 with an impact class of 50 points, and that equates to 29 points for PvE body shots and 86 points of critical damage. We don't have any PvP numbers for this weapon just yet. For the rest of the weapons, I'm just gonna go over the archetype categories and what they mean. I just wanted to mention the damage numbers with those those first few weapons to see how they correlate with, you know, the impact, rate of fire stats, and then the archetype. But up next, we have the Deathstalker 4AU Auto Rifle. This one features rapid fire, which gives you deep ammo reserves and a fast reload on empty. It also has a high rate of fire of 900, seeing as it's in the rapid fire class. We have the Urchin 3SI Sidearm. This has lightweight on it, so it allows faster movement, and it also has a much higher handling stat of 18 nine points right there. We have the Red Mamba 3MG submachine gun. This one coming also with lightweight and the Phosphorus MG4 submachine gun also with lightweight. We have the Nadod D. I think that's how you say that. This is an aggressive category of grenade launcher. Aggressive means high damage, high recoil. That makes a lot of sense for a grenade launcher. We have the Copperhead 4SN sniper rifle. This comes with rapid fire, so it has deep ammo reserves and a fast reload when empty. So this could actually be fairly good for PvE stuff with those perks. Most notable thing about this weapon is that it does 250 critical damage in PvP, and that is a one-shot kill. I'm not sure if that includes supers but it does give us a very general idea of you know that one shot requirement in terms of damage we've got the retro futurist shotgun with lightweight again move faster with this weapon it also has a pretty high handling stat of 81 points the morrigan d rocket launcher comes with hack a precision so it fires small auto tracking missiles which is pretty awesome we've got the main ingredient fusion rifle this is a precision class of weapon so the recoil pattern is more vertical of course this is within the 
the fusion rifle class specifically. And then we have the Tarantula 3FR, a linear fusion rifle. This one has a precision modifier, but it has a different description, obviously specific to this weapon. And this fires a long range energy bolt. And interestingly, it does do a chunk more damage in PVE than the Copperhead Sniper. So this one does 745 PVE headshot damage versus 630 on the Copperhead. So I know this video has been a bit of a long one. There are a few things that are kind of unclear at this point, but I think overall we've got a good idea of how this weapon system works. Of course, we'll get much more accurate and specific understandings about types of weapons once we actually have the game. But for now, this is about the best we can really do. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Let me know what you think down below. If you have enjoyed the video, a like is very much appreciated. It really helps me out on the channel. Also feel free to hit that subscribe button to see a lot more Destiny content. For now though, I appreciate you guys watching. Whatever you get up to, have an awesome day.